I'm sure you've all heard of key lime pie. Well, this is a key lime pound cake. Um, I live in New England and this is March and it's hard to find key limes at this time of year. So I had to buy um, the concentrate, the key lime juice concentrate. And it comes in the supermarket in a bottle like this. It is 100% uh, key lime juice, so it's authentic. Um, if you can't find either one, use regular limes. It really won't make that much of a difference. Anyway, what I have here is two sticks of softened butter, a half a cup of good quality shortening, three cups of sugar, six eggs, half a teaspoon of baking powder, three cups of flour, a quarter cup of key lime juice, and one cup of milk, and a little bit of salt. I'm gonna start off by mixing the powder and that little bit of salt, just a pinch into my flour. Okay, we're gonna put that aside for a minute. Now we'll start with our butter and our shortening. We'll get those started on the mixer. These are easy recipes, these pound cakes, but they are so delicious. There's so much that you can do with a pound cake. Besides just eating it plain like that, you can slice it and put fresh fruit on it. You can put ice cream on it, whipped cream, chocolate sauce, strawberry sauce, the list is endless. I need that. Okay, so I'm going to get my paddle attachment on there, get these creamed, and then I will gradually add the sugar and the eggs. my bowl. And now the eggs one at a time. I'm gonna let this go on a low, um, not very low, but a lower uh, speed for about one or two minutes just to get it really well creamed. Now I'll gradually put in the key lime juice. Now I'm gonna add in the flour, alternating with the milk. Put the flour in before I start the mixer.
balance of our flour. Mix it up well. I'll give that another 30 seconds in a minute, but I want to talk about the pans first. Now, traditionally, this is a large batch of um, batter. And traditionally, it's baked in a tube pan, such as this, also called an angel food pan, because it's a 10 inch, 10 cup, large capacity. But I want you to do it in this pan today. And because I like the way the cake looks when it comes out with all this roping or whatever you want to call it and it's got a nice big center so I can throw fruit down the middle if I want to. Um, I greased and floured it heavily. Now I'm not going to be able to put all of this batter into this pan because it's a smaller pan. This is only like eight cups. I'm going to have batter left over but what I'm going to do with it is I'm not going to waste it. I'm going to put it into either a mini cupcake size or regular cupcake size pans or maybe little loaf pans then I can freeze those for later on, you know, two weeks from now when I want a cake like this, just a piece. So now I'm just going to give this a few more seconds just to beat it up and then I'm going to put it in the pan. That's enough. And again, as I always do, when it's up to you what you want to do, is I always bake mine on a sheet pan because I just don't want to have to clean a mess if it happens to overflow, if I happen to put in more than I should have because this is a smaller pan. But that's totally up to you. Okay. My oven, in this case, is on at 325 degrees. And this will bake for an hour and 15 to an hour and 20 minutes. Just, you know, keep checking it. And again, like I said, this will make nice cupcake size, little cakes. But because it is a pound cake batter, which tends to be heavier than a cake batter, it's not going to bake at the same rate that a normal cupcake would bake. I mean, you might bake a cupcake anywhere from 18 to 24 minutes or whatever. This is going to take 35 minutes probably in a smaller pan. Now, I'm not going to overload this because I know that I will have a mess in my oven. So that's about three quarters full. And again, spread it out. I like to spread to the edges. Gets less of a dome in the middle. And then after this cake is baked, it will come out. It'll sit in its pan for 10 to 15 minutes to cool down a bit, and then I'll turn it out onto a wire rack to cool completely, and then I will show you a key lime glaze that goes on top of it. So 325, hour and 15, hour 20, again, toothpick test. Here's our key lime pound cake out of the oven. It's been sitting on the rack for a little over 10 minutes. It's still very, very warm. But I want to make the glaze because as soon as I turn it out, you want the glaze to go on the cake while it's still warm so it absorbs it. So in my bowl here, I have one cup of confectioner's sugar. And here I have two tablespoons of that key lime juice and a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm just going to mix that up into a nice little glaze. I'm getting it all over me, but that's okay. Everything I'm wearing is washable. There's our glaze. Now, again, like I said, this is still very, very warm. I've got some wax paper on the counter because I'm going to put the glaze on it and it's going to drip. Maybe. We'll see. Lip, I heard it plop. 
there we go. Now, just start our glaze. Keep going around and around and around with the glaze. Get it all out of there. And then I have a line here. And I'm going to just finish it off with a little bit of lime zest. Just a little bit, just to give it a little color. And believe me, you don't want to cut into this until it's really cold. It will just not be good. It'll fall apart. It's very, very flaky. And there you go. There's our key lime pound cake.